Did you ever dream of owning an exotic animal as a pet? Maybe you wanted a wolf or a bear cub. I know when I was a little girl, after watching Aladdin for the first time, I had my heart set on having a pet tiger of my very own. I was sure that since it had worked out so well for Princess Jasmine, it would be the same for me. My parents explained endlessly all of the reasons why my dream was not possible. It turns out it would not have been that difficult for me to obtain my childhood dream. Now most people would agree with my parents that exotic animals are not meant to be kept as pets. However, exotic pets are far more common than most people would ever imagine. For example, according to Born Free USA, there are currently between five and 7,000 tigers kept as pets. That's far more than the estimated 3,200 that exist in the wild. It is not actually as difficult to obtain an exotic animal as one might think. The black market is one source. However, thanks to the internet, owning your very own exotic pet is just a click away. I ran a simple search on Google for exotic pets and found that I could purchase monkeys, zebras, a kangaroo, various exotic cats, a jackal, and even an aardvark. Prices tended to be between three and $5,000 for each of these animals. I was shocked by the extensive list of animals that can be purchased. Most of these I have only ever seen in a zoo. The laws governing ownership of exotic pets vary from state to state. There are currently 20 states that have bans on exotic pets, nine states that have partial bans, 12 that require permits and or licenses, and nine that have no laws at all regarding exotic pets. I will explain these types of laws and regulations in more detail later. Wisconsin is one of the nine states that does not have laws regarding exotic pets. Only a certificate of veterinary inspection is required if the animal is brought in from out of state. My parents are so lucky I didn't learn these facts until after I had developed some common sense. Today I am going to explain the concerns raised by exotic animals being kept as pets and the laws and regulations in place to address these concerns. Let's get started by covering some of the concerns. Ownership of exotic animals is a growing trend. There are three main concerns related to keeping these types of animals as pets. The first is public health and disease control. Exotic animals are often the carriers of disease. The most common diseases are monkeypox, salmonella, and bee virus. These, these diseases are especially harmful because they are not native to North America. This means that people here have no natural immunities to these diseases. In 2003, there was an outbreak of monkeypox throughout the Midwest. This outbreak was traced back to prairie dogs and affected six states. The CDC and the FDA decided to put more restrictions on rodents as pets after this incident. Furthermore, several states began monitoring exotic pets in their jurisdiction more closely following the outbreak. Monkeys and reptiles are two of the most commonly kept exotic pets. They are also the two most likely to be carrying disease. Monkeys are often carriers, carriers of the bee virus. It is harmless to them, but if untreated, this virus is fatal to 80% of humans who have contact with it. It is estimated that 90% of reptiles carry and spread salmonella. These concerns, as serious as they are, are not the main reason behind the current regulations. Public safety is the main concern people, have, people voice when discussing exotic pets. If you have small children, having a new neighbor with a pet mountain lion will probably keep you up at night. Most people are concerned with the larger exotic animals escaping, such as the big cats, the wolves, the bears, and the larger reptiles. Between 1990 and 2011, there have been 75 deaths reported caused by exotic pets. The two types most responsible for most of the deaths were the big cats and the reptiles. Incidents with attacks and death are often the cause for states to impose more severe restrictions on exotic pets. The third concern is the welfare of the animals. This concern is probably the least monitored. There are very few regulations that address the conditions these animals are kept in. A recent incident in California showcased just how horrifying these conditions can become. When searching the grounds of a private breeder, officials discovered 90 tiger carcasses, as well as starved cubs being kept in freezers. Keeping animals like this is not cheap. Most people cannot afford to properly feed and house exotic animals. And in the end, it is the animals that end up suffering. Now that we know why the laws are necessary, let's look at what type of laws are currently in place to address these concerns. Laws concerning exotic pets exist on a federal, state, and local level. However, most are state and local. There are three types of restrictions placed on exotic pets. 
Bands and partial bands are the most common. A band means that the animals listed are not allowed to be privately owned at all. The most commonly banned animals are big cats, wolves, bears, reptiles, and non-human primates. There are also some states that have partial bans. This means they ban some animals but make allowances for others. For example, Louisiana bans bears, cougars, and non-human primates. However, if you own the animal prior to the ban, you're grandfathered in. They also specify that there are no venomous or large constricting snakes, which is defined as exceeding 12 feet in length, allowed without a permit. This is just one example. Several states get into specific detail as to which animals are allowed and which are not. Some states require only that the owners have a license or permit to possess exotic pets. These laws often list specifically what the state considers an exotic pet. For example, Delaware's law states that a permit must be obtained prior to possessing a wild animal or hybrid of a wild animal. It is also illegal to own, sell, or possess any venomous snake that is not native to that state. These permits and licenses primarily keep the state formed as to what is residing within their jurisdiction. They do little to protect the residents of the state or the exotic animals. Finally, we come to the states that have no regulations concerning exotic pets at all. Some of these states require an entry permit and or certificates of veterinary inspection. Again, I would like to mention that we live in one of the few states that fall under this category. This covers the solutions to the concerns we previously addressed. Now you are familiar with the three main concerns regarding exotic pets and the laws that are in place to address these concerns. I would like to finish by telling you about a recent incident that has received national attention. This incident highlights the concerns we have discussed and shows us how the state is taking action to address these concerns. The incident in occur occurred in Ohio, which currently does not have any restrictions on exotic pets. They simply require entry permits and a veterinary certi certi certificate of inspection. A man and his wife own more than 50 exotic animals, including lions, tigers, bears, monkeys, and a variety of other exotics. These animals had been raised by the couple and according to statements were like children to them. They had been facing bankruptcy due to unpaid fines and taxes. The couple spent most of their income caring for their pets. There had been many incidents of their pets escaping in the past, but law enforcement did not take action until it was too late. The man committed suicide after releasing 56 of his exotic pets from their cages. Due to the large number of animals on the loose, police and wildlife officials were forced to kill most of the animals after they ran out of tran tranquilizers. This included 18 tigers, six black bears, two grizzly bears, 17 lions, one wolf, a baboon, and six mountain lions. Due to the seriousness of this incident, Ohio is currently trying to pass a bill that will ban the future ownership of all dangerous exotic animals. It is unfortunate that it takes a loss like this for the state to take action especially when you consider the number of complaints that have been made regarding exotic pets in this state. Now you have learned about the concerns and regulations regarding exotic pets and seen what can happen when these concerns are not addressed. In closing, I invite you to further explore this topic. It is constantly changing and evolving. Thank you for your time. I hope you have enjoyed the information I have presented here today.